Hello everyone, this is the video for week two, so I guess lecture number two. And the assignment for this week is more or less the same as last week. We're still going to model 10 things, 10 things that you have um, laying around, 10 things that are on your desk or within reach. Um, like I said in class, it's better to be able to look at the things in real life when you're trying to 3D model it rather than just trying to go off the top of your head. So um, I guess I'm just gonna show some extra modeling tools that might help you model some of those things, maybe push the complexity a little bit. And if you're feeling comfortable with what we've done so far, this might be helpful for um, kind of like, you know, progressing or adding more tools to the toolbox. So to get started, I'm going to add a um, cube. And I'm going to do a little bit with a tool called the knife tool. And the knife tool is, um, so, so far we've been using the insert edge loop tool, which will add an edge around the whole object. Um, the knife tool, if you tap K, you can manually cut lines or edges into your 3d model and it's very helpful for doing something that you can't uh, really achieve with insert edge loops it's also good for cleaning up your model which you don't have to worry about too much now but it might be something to think about in the future um, so it is a good tool to have it's a little tricky so you have to tap k and you get this little kind of icon um, if you hold shift you can snap to the middle of an edge which can be helpful sometimes. Um, otherwise it will automatically snap to vertices. It's always better to kind of try to end on a vertice so you don't have any kind of open edges. So if you kind of do something like this, it's kind of bad form because you have these weird uh, vertices just kind of floating that aren't sort of connected into the wireframe. It's also usually not a good idea to have concave faces like this. So meaning this face kind of comes in on itself. Uh, if you ever come across something like that, um, you know, it's always better just to kind of like cut it up, kind of get rid of that concave vertex or concave face like that. So the knife tool can be handy for circumstances where you need a edge in a specific place. Um, so actually, let me see if I can create a scenario where that might be helpful. So I'm gonna grab this vertex on the top and do control B to bevel and pull up my bevel menu. I'm going to switch this to vertices. And what that's going to do is it's going to kind of split the vertex like that. Um, from here, I can go K and I can put some extra edges in here. Also, it's always a good idea to have uh, three or four sided faces. Four sided is good because you can do um, like edge loop stuff. Hold on a second, let me try that again. Boop, hold, there we go, enter. So now I have this face here. This looks like it's a quad or a four sided face. It's actually eight because these vertices here kind of split it up. If I do Shift Alt S and scale it, Shift Alt S, it's kind of doing finger gymnastics. Um, what it does is scales it into a perfect circle. And then now you have a shape you can sort of extrude like that, which can be handy. Sometimes transitioning from a cube shape to a circular shape can be tricky. So um, that's helpful. Um, another thing I wanted to go over is, um, is duplicate. So I use duplicate a lot when I'm trying to do things that are separate components. So for example, if I wanted to create a cap, let's say this is some sort of bottle and I wanted to create a cap on it, you can add an edge loop there. And technically you could also control plus is a shortcut for selecting faces that are connected to faces. Um, anyway, I could just kind of extrude that out and have something like that, um, which could be okay. But sometimes it is better to have it separate. So I'll select, the, especially if you're doing like UV mapping or texturing, or I just like 
things that are separate in real life to be separate in a 3D model. Um, so sometimes, you know, control plus and shift D is duplicate. And then if I tap Z, I can sort of like duplicate it up on the Z axis. And then I could scale it up a little bit. And now I have a cap that is kind of separate just from duplicating that section. Um, it does look kind of weird because it's floating and it doesn't have the bottom. Um, to fix the bottom, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, you can hold Alt and select, it'll select the loop. And you can tap E and S. So E extrude and S, um, and that'll kind of bring it in. I accidentally deselected, so select the inner ring again. And if you tap M on the keyboard and then do at center, it'll merge that extrusion at the center and then you get like kind of kind of like pulls it in. Um, that's one way to do it. There's another way to do it. If you do Alt F, that fills it, but the fill gives kind of like a unpredictable sort of result with edges. Um, and I actually think that this result is cleaner. So either way, now if I tap, go to face mode, tap L, L will select a whole, I'm sorry, select a whole element, G, Z, and then I can kind of drop it on top. And now I have things that are kind of separated, which is good. Uh, so there's that one. Um, so I'm just gonna delete this object. There's also some modifiers. So once you start getting comfortable with 3D modeling, sometimes you can use modifiers to do some work for you, which can be helpful. So um, I'm going to grab a torus for some reason. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna do a torus. Tor it Let's, this can be kind of like two lessons in one. Let's do a cylinder and I'm going to drop the points down just a little bit. And then, um, I'm just going to keep it like this and then I'm going to, uh, scale it by a factor of five, I guess is fine. So there's my tall cylinder and I'm going to bend it. So there's a modifier you can use to do a bend, like a macaroni shape. Um, but in order to bend it, you need to have loops in there. So remember when you're changing the shape, you need edge loops and vertices to, um, you know, hold the resolution. So I'm going to add an edge loop and then increase it to eight is probably fine. So there it is. All right. So this is, so I'm going to go to object mode, select it, go to the wrench, go to modifier. And so these are modifiers and they can do different things to your model. Um, sometimes they have kind of like cool thing, useful things, um, kind of more like advanced things like transferring vertex normals. But um, I do use this from time to time. It's called simple deform. And it has these different like, uh, I guess, functions you can do. So I could go to bend and you could choose the correct axis and bend it. Um, but you see, it's kind of like weird. So it's bending, but it's also stretching at the same time. Um, so I knew I, I kind of like left that error in there just to kind of like show you what to do in this case. And this goes for really anything, same thing with bevel or anything. So um, to fix it, I'm going to remove the modifier. You don't have to remove it. I, I just like to tap in. And if you go to scale, you can see how it's scaled five on the Z. So it's happening is blender is bending the shape the way it was and then scaling it after. So this is kind of like an extra step that it's adding to the object. So if you want to do anything to your model, some sort of tool, and it's looking weird. If you control a, you can apply your scale. Um, you can also apply rotation or location, but for now we're just gonna do scale and then it resets it to one. So now if we put the smooth deform back on it, I'm sorry, simple deform with bend, 
you can see you get a the bending result that you would expect 180 degrees and there we go and then obviously you know i can rotate this model by negative 90 and then you have this kind of shape and so it's funny so when you interestingly when you use modifiers if you go into edit mode you can still edit the original model the way it was before the modifier is put on it so the modifier is sort of temporary um so like for example if i were to go to x-ray select all the polys in the middle and extrude those out like puff them out you can see like that gets sort of like added into the bending algorithm which is kind of cool um so here you can't really edit your model once it's bent and then you just need to click and apply your modifier and now it's applied and you have this kind of macaroni shape uh another thing i wanted to um kind of talk about a little bit is uh i saw some people modeling things like cups and bowls which is fine um but something to kind of like save yourself a headache is when i do a shape like that i always like to keep it uh like open if that makes sense so for example um if i were to take this cylinder and extrude in the top to create a lip and extrude it down i created like kind of an a solid 3d shape so you have to remember that polygons are not three-dimensional i mean they are three-dimensional but they only render on one side so if i were to delete this face you can see this is the same polygon i'm just looking at it from the back and in fact you can click on your render settings and you can turn on back face calling and what that does is just show you like which direction the polygon is facing um so you know like you can see through the they don't have backs they only have front sides so if you're trying to model like a 3d cup it's kind of weird to leave it like this so um naturally people most people will let me see if I can undo enough times. So people will kind of do this, extrude in, and then create kind of a, a lip there. But now the problem is too, when you go into modeling, you know, um, go to two, you're trying to change the shape of it and you have to do the both inside and outside, um, which can be kind of annoying. So something I recommend people doing that I haven't seen and it's a common mistake is just kind of like delete delete that top face and keep it open as if it was three dimensional and then here you can do all of your stuff to it to make it i guess cup like whatever that whatever that ends up being i don't know um hang on three control plus plus that in a little bit so you can create an interesting shape cup um you can create um hold on a second i'm just trying to uh get something in here three So, you know, whatever kind of shape you have. And then um, from here, you could, you know, go if you want, after it's already finished, you could kind of scale it in and then you could get your little inside going, right? Um, you can also kind of keep it like this and use a modifier. And there's one called solidify, which will turn it into a 3D shape. So I could, increase the thickness and kind of give it some thickness inside it does kind of keep that lip on the inside which might be something you don't want um and you can always go back and um edit that if you want to but um that's always handy too. uh solidify and then solidify is interesting as well so when you get to more advanced modeling you can actually uh put 
put like the inside in a different vertex group, which is kind of a way to organize different parts of your model. And excuse me, that can be used for some kind of animation thing or I don't know, but that's kind of a good use of a modifier. Um, there actually is a um, bevel modifier. So if I have an object, I can add a bevel modifier and you can just kind of modify <laughs> bevel everything all at once if you want to and create, you know, a little soft cube kind of shape, or you could use this on anything. Um, let's see, that's really about, I don't, some of them I use for other things that are kind of more advanced. Um, I know that people were getting into the subdivision surface, which um, subdivision means it takes your polygons and then it divides them by with two edges, which kind of divides them into four because uh, it kind of makes a cross section. And so what that can do is give you kind of a uh, smoother result. Uh, so let me actually see if I can go back all the way to the cup. And let's put the subdivision surface on it to show you what it does. So it smooths it out, right? Um, so I could shade smooth. So it kind of gives it a smoother appearance. Um, but what it does also do, which can be good or bad, is it creates a kind of like averages everything out. So you do lose, um, you do lose these like kind of like hard edges here and you can bring those back in pretty easily. Um, actually, let me see if I can uh, do it this way. Let's see if that works. Um, yeah, not not as much as I had. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't really work as, as much as I had thought. Um, but anyway, so you could set up how many levels. So this is how many levels. So if I do two, it divides it exponentially by two. Um, now this, you have to be kind of careful because it does increase the wireframe pretty significantly. Um, so if I were to apply this modifier, you can see how it looks, which might be too much or it might not be. Oh, Blender just crashed. Um, give me one second to load it back up. All right, Blender is back up. That is that is extremely rare. It's very, very rare that Blender crashes like that. Um, I think maybe it's only happened a handful of times and usually it's my fault. I don't know if what I did if I accidentally closed it or if I did so, I don't know really what I did. Um, I think I was doing like the subdivision surface. So let me just kind of like model something really quick. I don't really remember what I was not or what it looked like exactly, but I have a vague idea too. Kind of have like a little lip there and then delete the top. All right, so I think I was doing subdivision service so what might have happened is I might have accidentally cranked this up. I don't know. I have no idea what I did. Um, so let's go and shade smooth this model. So yeah, so it kind of averages everything out. And supposedly, I don't want to do it this way. So um, if you mark sharp, it should take that into the... Maybe it doesn't. Maybe creases mean something else. I don't know. I don't really do it this way. That's fine. Um, edge crease. Okay, that's something. That kind of did something. Anyway, I'm just going to, um, I kind of got distracted. Um, so if I wanted this to be sharper, if you add some extra loops in there, you can kind of see how it kind of like holds the shape a little better. And that's kind of um, what you have to do sometimes. So add one here. So now you can see I have that nice sharp kind of edge. So it's called subdivision subdivision modeling or sub D modeling. 
where you kind of model something with a subdivision modifier on and you just kind of like add the edges in and the more edges you kind of add together, you get like a sharper result. Um, so that's handy. But again, like I said, you have to just kind of be careful with it. So if I put it on a one, it still looks pretty good. The bottom looks kind of weird, but bottoms of cylinders always look weird because when you do a subdivision, if you have non four sided or non quads, you get these weird kind of like wire looking wire frames that you have to, so you get like this kind of weird kind of star looking thing, um, which you can fix with Let's see. Actually, you know what? Let's actually fix that. This is a good another use of the knife tool. Um, so let's go into edit mode. So instead of letting Blender just kind of like do it up, um, if you get the knife tool and just kind of grab. So click, click, and then enter. Enter sort of. So now the bottom is all quads, all four sided. So if I go to object mode, you can see how much better that looks. You don't have that weird star on the bottom. So that's subdivision modeling. You can smooth stuff out if you want. A couple of you asked me if you could do it and you can just be careful. So if I apply this, you can see the wireframe is a little heavier. Um, but even then you could just, you know, come through like this pretty quickly. And X and dissolve edges. So dissolve edges will remove unneeded edges. So you can do it if you want, if you wanna go back and do some cleanup. And the last thing I wanted to show is, um, let me make a, I don't know, a sphere. And let's drop it down. So I have better, let's do 16, 16 and edit mode. So there's also bridge. So if you have a situation where let's say you have, oops, why did not not delete X, delete faces. You have this kind of like hole or gap, you wanna fill the gap. If it is the same model, you can select an edge, shift edge, then go to edge and then bridge edge loops. And it will kind of like put a poly between those. There you go. And you can kind of close the gap. Um, I think you can do it on large. You can do it. Let's see. Let's try to do it. Let's just um, boop X delete faces. So I'm going to use alt and select both rows. So alt click to select that loop then kind of hold shift alt click that one and then a bridge edge loops. Yeah. So it works pretty good. Um, bridging gaps, which can be handy sometimes. And I think that's it. So these are a couple of extra things. Just keep modeling stuff. Um, just remember the second assignment is due on Tuesday the 16th at 1159 p.m. And then you'll start the next one, which is modeling 10 more things. So it's a good way just to get used to modeling, get used to the tools. Um, in the beginning, as a beginner, repetition is key. So getting as many models under your belt as possible is the key. Then once you feel comfortable, you can start making them good. So uh, just keep at it and have a good week. And I'll see you all, I guess, a week from today.